Hi, in this video we will learn about this beta and gamma coefficient of skewness. This is one of the four relative measures of skewness. In the previous video we talked about this absolute measures of skewness. And the first one is mean minus median, the second one is mean minus mode and the third one deals with quartiles. That means third quartile minus second quartile minus second quartile minus first quartile like that. But we have a problem with these absolute measures in the sense that in a distribution with small variation as well as large variation, the same amount of skewness has different meanings. And for this reason, these absolute measures are not good enough to give you a clear idea about the skewness in a distribution. And for that, we will shift our focus to relative measures of skewness. There are four relative measures of skewness. In this video, we will talk about this beta and gamma coefficient of skewness. And there will be three other videos on this Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness, Bowley's coefficient of skewness and Kelly's coefficient of skewness. So, we start with beta and gamma coefficient of skewness. Carl Pearson defined the gamma, uh, sorry, beta and gamma coefficient of skewness based upon central moments of order 2 and 3. It goes like this that beta 1 equal to m suffix 3 that is central moment of order 3 squared by a central moment of order 2 cubed. Now according to your criteria what we have learned before that a good measure of skewness will give you 0 when you will have a symmetrical distribution. It will give you a positive value when you will have a positively skewed distribution and it will give you a negative value when you will have a negatively skewed distribution. So, for a symmetrical distribution, this formula, this ratio, the beta 1 will give you 0. So, it is performing properly according to your criteria for a good measure of skewness. But, in case of skewed distribution, whether positive or negative, this beta 1 will give you magnitude, but it will not give you direction. Now, let's see why this is happening. See, the numerator. This is a central moment of order 3. And this central moment of order 3 may be positive or may be negative. But since it is squared, the positive magnitude or the negative magnitude will give you a positive ultimately, right? So, whatever may be the sign of this central moment of order 3, the numerator will give you a positive value always, right? Now, you come to the denominator. In the denominator, you have central moment of order 2. That means this is a variance. And since it is a variance, it will always give you a positive value. And if that positive value is cubed, then ultimately it will give you a positive value. So the numerator is giving a positive as well as the denominator. So making this beta 1 to throw out always a positive magnitude of the skewness. In this way, the beta 1 is capable of giving you the magnitude, but not the direction. So, this is the problem with this beta 1. Now, what to do? Carl Pearson's gamma coefficient will come to rescue. What is the idea actually? You see, the numerator, the third order central moment. It may be positive, it may be negative. Now, if you can clear this power 2, then the numerator will be positive whenever this moment will give you a positive sign and the numerator will give you negative whenever this moment will give you a negative sign. And on the denominator, you cannot do anything with this variance because variance will always give you a positive. 
So the technique is you clear the power two of in uh, of the third order central moment, right? So you write like this: gamma one equal to plus minus root over beta one. That means you root over this whole system, and naturally this squared will get erased, and it will give you m three or m suffix three. And in the lower side, you have this m suffix two whole cube whole root over. So if you develop the denominator like this, that you take this root over inside so that it becomes root over m suffix two and the whole cube. Now what is this m suffix two root over? It will be root over sigma squared. And when you have this root over on sigma squared, it will give you sigma. So the ultimate term becomes like this: m suffix three by sigma whole cubed. Now this sigma is actually your standard deviation. So I repeat, this lower one, the denominator, this sigma will always give you a positive magnitude, but this m suffix three will give you either positive or negative. Ultimately. Making this gamma one to be a positive or negative, right? So the sine of the skewness would depend upon the value of m suffix three. I hope it's clear to you the beta and gamma coefficient of skewness. In the next video, we will discuss about the second relative measure of skewness, that is, Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness.